Hey, how y'all doing out there in YouTube land? Ho, ho, ho. It's the holiday time. Holiday time. Next week it's Christmas. Time for Christmas. Time to put on the old Christmas hat. <laughs> All right. Well, this is my year-end video for flippers. This is going to be it for flippers for this year. And um, flippers are basically what I would call my work knives now. They're the knives I like to carry the most to work, or, or flippers. Why? Because when I'm at work and I got dead time, I like to read and fidget and stuff like that. And and one of the knives I like to fidget with most was, is a flipper knife. And so, you know, I, I picked, I've picked out knives that I think are safe for self-defense if need be. You know, that's a last resort, you know, type of thing. But I always feel like all my folders should be capable of being great self-defense folders too even though hopefully i will never have to use them for that but I, I do always hope that you know that if i do have to use it if i have a knife on me i want to, i want it to be able to be a, be, be able be able to be a great self-defense tool also for emergency situations all right here we go and as you can see these ones that are in the drawer, this is my this is my rotation drawer. Whenever you hear me talk about my rotation drawer, this is what I'm talking about. These are the drawers, these are the knives that have been in my drawer, you know, for during this past year. That have made it into my drawer. Not every knife can make it into my drawer. I've had lots of knives that I purchased this past year that didn't make it into my drawer. And some of these knives are right here. In here, these knives over here are the knives from last year. They were my favorite flippers. And as you can see, they were all pretty much um, SOGS, <laughs> Studies and Observations Group, and CJRB. And the one that started it all. Oh, this is the knife that got me into flippers. I didn't know re really anything about flippers or anything like that because previously to getting into flippers, um, I had started to get into like, um, like crossbar locks and fidgeting knives, but not necessarily flippers. All the ones I were I was you know checking out were like the crossbar locks, and pretty much you know like because uh, the patent had been lifted off the uh, the cold. I mean not cold steel, but um. Benchmade's um, patent on crossbar locks, and everybody was able to make them legally. And, and there, there were some great offerings, like you know, like from Hogue, you know, with the Able Lock and XR Lock from Sog. And um, who else? Who else has a great crossbar lock? I know those aren't the only ones. A CJRB has a great one with the recoil lock. And well, that's about all I can think about for now. But, you know, a lot of people came out with um, crossbar locks. And that's like the generic term for it now is crossbar locks for an access lock. It was originated by, you know, uh, Benchmade. I want to say Osborne. I'm not sure. Or is it McHenry? They came out with the um, access lock. I, I can't remember. But anyway, Benchmade was the first one they had rights to, to produce it. Just like um, Cold Steel got... The triad lock from Andrew Demko. Now they're the ones that have the rights to produce the, the triad lock. Because they own the triad lock. Cold Steel does. The Cold Steel Company. Not Andrew Demko no more. Even though it's his his lock and his design. But anyway, this is the one that got me started. After I flipped this open, I fell in love. I fell in love. And this is actually a real heavy duty. This probably got the thickest liner that I've seen for a production knife, you know, uh, a regular production knife that's in the budget range, should I say, with uh, um, leaf spring. I think this is like, this is 1.8 millimeters thick, almost two millimeters thick. That's a very thick liner. The only other liners I've seen real thick like that are the ones like Artisan and CJRB uses. They use like a 1.6 millimeter in most of their knives. But that is really thick. For instance, um, Spyderco and like this one right here, the Cold Steel Limited, that's a 1.2 millimeter. 
And that's pretty much a standard. 1.2 is like pretty much a standard. 1.2, 1.4, right around there. And then when you get them to be like 1.5, 1.6, I found, because I just recently got back into liner locks. I haven't been out of school, out of, out of, out of, out of, you know, out of the liner lock thing for a long time. Because I got hurt by a liner lock and it turned me totally off to liner locks. But liner locks with flippers and finger grooves, your hands protect it. Even if the liner lock was to come undone, it's not going to close it on your hand because the flipper will protect you. That's the reason why these I found are okay. And like with the cold steel, I love the cold steel lock. The liner lock lock plus the flipper, this makes this a very safe knife for self-defense if need be. Or hard duty use or heavy duty use. Now this knife right here, even though I absolutely love it, it's too big and the small one I don't really care for. So what did I do? I started trying out other ones. That's how the party got started. The first ones I went to were the CJRBs because they were inexpensive. I tried these out. And you know what? They rock. The CJRBs rock. They're some of my favorites. The recoil lock. Some people either like this lock or they don't like it. I absolutely love it. I'm a fidgeter. That's the reason why I love it. <laughs> And these locks, these knives are solid. They're lock, they lock up solid. The, the, this one right here was called the kicker. This is the kicker. It's like a little bit smaller, or the thinner blade, the blade profile and everything. is a little bit narrower and smaller, smaller than the um, Krog. This is my favorite one. Though. I love the Krog. This is the original version of the Krog. Both of these knives are in D2. And they didn't have skeletonized um, liners. Let me make sure. No, no skeletonization in this one. And none in this one either. So these were a little bit heavier than the new versions. That's where I was going with that. The new versions have skeletonized liners and they have the AR RPM 9 steel. The blade thickness is exactly the same. Everything else is exactly the same, but it's lightened up a little bit. And they, they got a little bit tighter tolerances on the on the um on the actual lockup too. I mean, it's a little bit better. So, I really love the new Krog. The new Krog has become the CJRB Krog, and it's an extremely inexpensive knife. These knives are under $40. The, the, the CJRB Krog is like $37 or something like that. And uh, when I bought these, these were like $34, $32. And they're made out of G10 with thick stainless steel liners, an excellent working lockup, and they use wolf springs instead of the omega springs, and they have like a 3.2 millimeter blade thickness, uh, full flat ground, D2 blades. They're ex excellent black, excellent knives, G10. The new one has G10, and it's got skeletonized um, liners, and ARRPM9 powdered stainless steel. So, you know. I like them better, and they, and they work a little bit better, too. And the new one, the new one is in the box. This one gets, this is one of the knives I carry the most to work. The CJRB Krog, the new one. This is the ARRP9. This is a new model. It's got the skeleton knife handle scales. Excellent knife. Highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. It's one of my favorites. And SOG with their XR lock is something else. They came out with the XR lock, and to me, this is one of the best systems for people who like fidgety knives that are nice and strong. It's the XR lock. Highly recommend that any other SOGs. And as you can see, I tried them all. <laughs> I tried them all. This is, my, this is probably one of my favorite ones right here, though, the Kiku. I absolutely love the Kiku. The Kiku's in my box right now. And the version of the Kiku that's in my box, this is the older version with the stainless steel liners, so it's heavier and thicker and stronger. The new version is totally carbon fiber. The handle, 
the blade weighs more than the handle. They still make this version too, though. This is absolutely my favorite version, though. I like the I like the heavier version. Even though you know the, the, the smaller one, I mean the other one is super lightweight and doesn't feel like nothing in your pocket. I just sort of like I don't know when I when I carry a Kiko maybe because I carried this one for about a year before I got the other one, and um, I just like this one being heavy. I mean to me it's, it's a knife that's supposed to be heavy. It's like a it's like a, a little sog seal. That's the way I think of it. Absolutely like the Kika. It was one of my favorites from last year. It's also one of my favorites this year. The Sog Seal. Everybody knows about the Seal. This is American made one. Made in the USA. Super heavy duty. XR lock. This would be a lot like the um, Benchmade Adamas. I think that's what it is. The Benchmade Adamas. The, the heavy duty Benchmade. I would put this one on the same levels like that one. It's more heavy duty than a Contigo. I have the Contigos. It's an excellent knife. This is a knife that, that you can depend on. After that would be the Flash. The Flash. I love the Flash. This is what this was one of my favorites last year. My favorite fidgeting knives. Super fidgety. Love it. The Sog Flash. Another one of my favorites from last year. The Pentagon. And this is my, uh, yep, that's my custom one. Stiletto. This one came straight from um, Studies and Observation Group Sog. And I had another one before this that was, that they did this for me. And it wasn't right, so I had to send them back because the blade was hitting the backspacer. And they sent me two more new ones, and this is perfect. Perfect. I've had it for over a year now. Well, yeah, over a year. Almost a year. Super Fidgety. One of my favorite knives. This is probably my, one of my favorite favorites from last year. I love the Sog Pentagon. And at first, it rubbed me the wrong way, and then after I got the, after I got the other one back and it was perfect, I fell all in love with it. This is the one that made me want to get all the other Sogs. In the first place, this is one that tracked me to attention to Sog. And this is Sog Tack. Another great one. I bought this one because it sort of reminded me of a, um, the Cold Steel uh, the Tower War. The blade, the blade, the blade style sort of does. So it got like a Persian style blade, upswept blade. Love it. And last but not least, the one that we started off with, the Terminus. Awesome little EDC. Awesome little folder. They make this in all sorts of different colors. and I think they make all of them different colors now. When I first got them, they were all black. I think they're making them all in different kind of colors now. The Terminus. Everybody knows about them, so I'm not going to go into detail and all the specs and all that kind of stuff. It's just trying to do this quick. Next up, will be some knives that didn't quite make it into my box, but I tried them out. And I, when I first decided to try out the artisan knives, I decided I wanted to try out all the four inch artisan knives. And the four inch ones were, that I tried out first, were all the budget ones. This is a Zumwalt. And I got a great deal on this one. This was a closeout knife, I think it was. I got a great deal on it. That's why I bought it. Because I normally don't like these kind of handle scales. I usually like the um, Macarda's or the G10. Those are my two favorite handle scales. Macarda and G10. And after that, I like aluminum and titanium handle scales. But I don't really... And I, like, I, like, I like carbon fiber too. I'm sorry. I like carbon fiber too. But I like real carbon fiber. I don't like the... Um, I'm not too big on this laminated stuff. The only people that do... The only company that does it right to me is Spyderco. This is laminated carbon fiber over G10, and I love the way this feels and looks. It's perfect. I love that. But it's a very high-end knife. It's an expensive knife, too. It's not an inexpensive knife. This is an inexpensive knife. I think this was like... I got a special deal on this one. I think it was under 50 bucks. 
They're normally like 60 something, I think. Awesome knife. But, it didn't meet my safety requirements. Oh, excuse me there. It didn't meet my safety ex safety requirements, so that's the reason why I didn't make it into my box. The safety requirements for... I'm not going to do it hard because I'm going to cut myself. But this will go past your hand. It, it, it takes a little bit. It doesn't go back past it easily. But, you know, if it's a hard whack, I don't know. I wouldn't trust that so much. So that's the reason why the zone won't make it into the box. And it's the reason why I didn't get, like, the titanium version and other versions. Because the ones I like, I got, like, all the different versions of them. The next one up was the Virginia. And this is a beautiful looking knife. I love the way this knife looks. The Virginia. It's a beautiful looking knife. Nice size too. Nice handle. Real comfortable in all the different grips. It's a G10 handle. With about like a saber ground blade. D2. Artisan cutlery. This is an artisan, not a CJB. CJRB, I mean. Artisan makes most of the, more of the bigger knives. I noticed that CJRB makes, tends to make a lot of the smaller knives. I mean by like smaller, I mean like, uh, like three and a half inches or smaller. And if you want to get the bigger ones, you got to get an artisan. Artisan makes a lot of the four inch knives. This knife has hardly ever been used at all. Because when I saw that the blade would close in on me, I, I didn't even really mess with it anymore. So it's pretty much a, just a, a brand new knife. Same thing with the Zumwalt. But that's that one. Next one up. That didn't quite make it in my box is the Agave. This is CJRB Agave. I got this one for 29 bucks. I absolutely love this knife. It's just that I already have enough knives in my box. This one is this was is one I would call safe. It's a D2 blade. D2 blade. It's got the finger grooves like sort of like the Scoria. Very nice knife. And I guess you would call that modified Warren Cliff. It's not a sheep's foot, so more of a Warren Cliff blade. Beautiful, beautiful knife. Nice big finger groove, finger troil. It's very comfortable. Open, open backspace. This this is a um, aluminum handle scales, and it has um, embedded stainless steel liners that are not lightened up. So, you know, D2 means that, you know, D2 and handle scales that, I mean, the liners that aren't lightened up usually sort of tells me that this is an older CJRB. Because the first CJRBs, they didn't lighten up, they, they didn't do very much lightening up in the, the, the liners, and they always use D2. This is a model 1911. Agave. I actually like it though. It's got it's got a nice feel in the hand. Feels a little bit slippery though. And this is my uh, spider crack. I can't remember the name of this one. Uh, for the life of me, I, I was trying to remember the name of it, but I couldn't remember the name of it. And it's one that when I first got it, I noticed that it would cut you if you didn't um, dull the blade right here, because when you fold it, it's got a compression lock. When you fold it, it comes back around, and the blade ends up right in there, the edge. So I, I, I dulled the edge in that first part of the blade where it would hit you. And I carried this one for a little bit. I forget the name of it. It's really a nice knife. It's not an inexpensive knife. It's a couple hundred bucks. And it's got embedded stainless steel liners that are um, lightened up. It's got polished G10. It's got an S30V blade, fairly thick, made in um, Taichung, Taiwan, so it's at the really good factory in, in Taiwan. 
Probably might be one of the best factories. Maybe it might be the best factory. Extremely well known for making perfect knives. Super high quality, high quality, you know, very good um, quality control. It's a beautiful knife. But I didn't get into carrying it. I tried to carry it for a little bit. And the handle feels a little bit slippery. That was one reason why I didn't carry it. And so it slides out of your pocket a little bit too easy for me. And, you know, I ride motorcycles. So, like, if a nice slide in and out of my pocket too easy, I won't carry them. Because I don't, don't want to lose it when I'm riding down the road on the motorcycle. It's okay if you're just walking around or if you're in a car, maybe. You don't really have to worry about that. But, you know, me, I do. And I felt like it was a little bit too busy with, like, this Emerson Wave. I felt like the Emerson Wave didn't sort of need to be here. And I would have rather have had a finger choil. And you didn't need the, um, the hole because the, the spidey hole is basically useless. So you can't really get a grip on that hole. So it's not even, and on this side, it's not very good grip either. So it's not good for a, a you know a thumb a thumb thing. You can do it, but it's like it's not comfortable. It's like then you finally can get it. It's easier to do it if you use the Emerson Wave part. Then you can do it, but then the Emerson Wave part stabs you. <laughs> so. It's a beautiful knife, beautiful knife. So I just ended up collecting it. I forget what the name is because I don't carry it, don't use it. Now another knife that I have carried a lot and it'll probably go back in my box because it's been in my box, but I decided to pull it out because it's not a safe knife either, but I do like the fact that I can wave it out my pocket and it's a stiletto. <laughs> it's a small stiletto, so three and a half, um, it's like three and three quarter inch blade. Titanium handle, artisan cutlery. Beautiful knife. It sort of reminds me of the Daryl Roth design of the stiletto that they used to make back in the day that was a lot bigger. And it was made by Camellia's Cutlery. It had um, blue titanium handles. I used to have a few of them. And it's like a smaller version of that. The way that the, the, has the, the blood grooves and the blade and stuff. It, it looks a lot like that knife. And so I, I absolutely love it. Even though it's not the safest knife. As far as like, you know, my requirements. As far as like, you know, the way the blade can fold in on your hand. It is a frame lock. So I feel a little bit safer. Because with the frame lock, you're, you're helping the frame lock a little bit when you're holding it. Because you're holding the, the actual lock bar against the blade tank. Whereas in a liner lock, you can't do that because you're holding onto the handle and not to the lock bar onto the blade tank. That's why I like frame locks a little bit over liner locks. And the next one that also used to be in my box, but I pulled it out because I started to feel like, you know what, it's not really a safe knife. It shouldn't be in my box. And I was getting purchasing other knives that were safe, that were deemed safe by me. So... I had to get moved out my box. But I absolutely love it. It's my Sharp. And this is a, um, a VG10 Damascus Shark that I polished. Absolutely love this knife. It's titanium handle scales with carbon fiber insert. Frame lock. And all these, all these artisan frame locks have the over travel stop and the hardened steel inserts. The removable hard steel inserts. Absolutely love it. Beautifully made knife. And this one has a 3.8 millimeter blade. This one is a 4 millimeter. That's a 4 millimeter. Absolutely love it. Great knife. Next one up. That was new for this year. They didn't make it in my box. I don't even think I did a video on this one. Artisan Cutlery. It's another beautiful knife from Artisan. This is the tradition. It's my titanium tradition. It's got blue hardware. Titan it's all titanium. The blade steel is uh, S35EN. 
and stone washed. Beautiful. This didn't make it in my box because I already have a tradition in my box I like a little bit more. Even though it's a, the budget version of this one. I just like the budget version a little bit better. Why? Because it has Makarta handles. And the can handles just feel a little bit more comfortable in my hands. This is like a brand new knife. It's never been used, so it's a little bit stiff. This one, uh, I already told you to steal on that. That's the Damascus. And this one is... S35VN. I also have one of these and M390. That's why I had to look. I didn't know which one was out. All right. Next on next up will be the blowback. This got an S35VN Damascus that I polished. And this was a used knife that I received. It had a couple little tiny rust spots on it. That's why I polished it all the way out. Beautiful knife. And I really love the way it looks polished. <laughs> Beautiful blade. That's the blowback. And the way that this recoil lock works is that it has a spring, a coil spring that rides in the back, back here. And this just slides back and forth on the, on the coil spring. That one was in the box too. And I pulled it out because I didn't have room for it. And I had other knives that were already like it, so. I decided to pull that one out because the one that I really like from Artisan or CJRB that has the, the recoil lock is the Krog. That's my favorite one. I know this is a lot more expensive as titanium handle scales and everything like that. It's a real lot fancier, but I just like the Krog. And this one right here, that's my collector. I got this one just to collect, not to use. It's the Cold Steel Lindsay Thompson Limited. Limited Oyabun. And this is the one to get. This is a beautiful knife. The liner lock thickness is 1.2 millimeters. About the same as like a Spyderco. And it's all polished. It's a pol Everything's all polished on this knife. So the, the handle slab, uh, the handle on uh, slabs are like two pieces of milled aluminum that have been polished. I don't know if it's 7071 or 6061. I mean, 7075 or 6061 of uh, aluminum, but whatever it is, it's beautiful. It reminds me of the Espadas. If you have a polished Espada, you know what I'm talking about. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful knife. It might be, you know, who knows? This might be the last signature knife from Cold Steel with Lindsay Thompson on it. So this might be a very good collector. And that's the reason why I bought this. I didn't buy it, to, buy it to use. I bought it this year. Beautiful knife. Beautiful knife. All right, that's part one of this one. We're going to do two parts. And I know it's being extra long. But, you know, this is the end of the year stuff. And so I just sort of want to get out, out there. And uh, let me see. Oh, wait a minute. I take it back. We got two more to do. I'm going to do these two, two first. Then, then the second part is just going to be all the knives I actually made it into my box I use this year. And which ones I like the best out of those. But this is the next one. Titanium handle scales. Titanium pocket clip. It's an Almar, and I kept, forget what the name of this one is. I think it's an Ultra Slim or something like that. But it's a stiletto. It has a D2 blade, bayonet style um, stiletto blade. Very thin. The, the blade stock is like 2.75 millimeter thick. Very well made, though. It's got a hardened steel insert and an over-travel stock. Titanium handles. It 
It didn't make it into my box because this only weighs like uh, 3.7 mil, uh, 3.7 ounces, and it's a beautifully made knife. It's it's a beautiful collector. I love the way this knife looks and made, and the way it's made. I love the way I love the action on it. The action is awesome. And it's it's just a really nice knife. It's just that I don't really need something like this. It's a little bit too thin and it's a little bit too slim. It's like a gentleman's stiletto. Is that a good way to put it? It's a beautiful knife. Beautiful knife. But it's a little bit too little for me. Anyway, that's that one. But I absolutely love it. I think it's a great knife. Great knife. And this one, this is the Kershaw. Kershaw Strata XL. And I have the smaller version also. This is a great knife too. It's got a D2 blade. And it's also got the thin, thinner blade stock. It's a frame lock, stainless steel frame lock. And, this, and the frame lock is lightened up, but it's hollowed out. And so it's lightened up. It's not that heavy. It's got um, copper copper um, finished aluminum covers. And this works as a, as a blade stop also on the, on the um, pivots. I think this might be glued on or something. I'm not sure how they fit that to there because I don't see any screw holes or anything. I don't know if it's melded on or glued on. And and it's got open back design. And the spacers have like um, wrench. Looks like you put a wrench on the spacers, which is kind of neat. G10. The reason why this one doesn't make it into my box, I love the Navaja style, is because it doesn't have any protection. This flipper doesn't protect your fingers at all. It would just close in on your hand. So that's the reason why. All right, well, that's the first part. First part, second part coming up. Peace out, Stiletto.